Hey guys, welcome back to our course of Spring Batch and Spring Batch Integration. Today in this video, we are going to talk about controlling step flow. To be precise, we are going to create a multi-step job since now all jobs that we have been creating in our example contains only one step. So for this tutorial, we are going to create a job that contains two steps and the execution of the steps going to be sequential. The question here may be why do we need a job with multiple steps? The answer can be, for example, let's suppose that you have a job that reads a file and persists the records into database. And then you receive a new requirement that says you have to delete all files that you process, okay? In order to maybe free space on your hard drive because sometimes the space is expensive. So you need a new step to delete all files that you have just read before. So Spring Batch offers the concept of multi-step job. So why not use the multi-step job to do the second requirement? So we are going to explore a little bit more about the multi-step job. For example, we have here, uh, let's suppose this is a job, okay? The first step we are going to read from a file and persist into database or for example, into Kafka or other outbound uh, channel that, that you, that you uh, prefer, okay? And the second step, okay, after the execution of this step, we are going to execute the next step, which is uh, what we are plan planning to do here, that we are going to delete the file after a step. The concept of separating uh, the business logic into steps is very nice because you can segregate each step in your job. So let's go into code and let's understand what we are going to do now. For this particular uh, example, in this tutorial, we are going to use a new concept called Tasklet. Do you remember, guys? If you are new in this channel, you have to see that we have here a video called Chunk Oriented Processing versus Tasklet. So if you want to understand very well what is Chunk Oriented Processing, just go and watch the video and come back here. For now, we are going to use the tasklet to implement our second step in order to achieve this new requirement, which is a multi-step job. So let's go, let's dive deep into a um, multi-step job. Let's go to the code. So here on our IntelliJ, the first thing that we have to do is to create a new package. Let's call it by steps. Let's create our class, uh, which we are going just to call it by uh, file collector. Now, in order to use the tasklet, uh, we have to implement the interface tasklet provided by Spring Batch. This tasklet interface contains only one method, which is execute. So if you check the execute method, um, it's, it receives a step contribution and chunk context. The contribution is, um, for example, how the step is contributing in our job. For example, the read, how many items the, the step has read, write, filter, and so on. So this is the contribution of a step. And the second argument is the chunk context. So if you remember, we have been using the job context and chunk context. So I will come back in the next video talking about uh, chunk context and step context. For, for this case, let's just leave it like that. And the second thing that we need to do here is we need to get the directory because in this 
file collector, we are going to a specific directory where we have our files uh, which we just processed and delete them. So in that order, let's, for example, go to our uh, application property and copy the property here. And let's just So, and let's just inject it here using the spring annotation value. If you are new in spring ecosystem, you can just uh, try to understand what this annotation does. But actually, this annotation is going to take this key, okay, and inject here the value. This is the key, okay, and the value will be this one. So, Doing so, uh, the next thing that we can do here is to get, this is a string, we can just get this as a path. So let's use the paths that get, and let's use the process directory, and we have here the directory. Very nice. So um, the next thing that we have to do it, as it is a directory, because we are going to iterate in a directory, we are going to use, we are going to check this directory and get all processed file that we have there and delete, delete uh, one by one. So how can we do that? We can do that uh, with different manners. It doesn't matter anymore, uh, but we can maybe use the files work from Java, uh, uh, NIO, I think. Okay, this is the pure Java, it's not just Spring. Okay, for that, let's use the try with resource. If you understand it, what is try with resource, if not, just check well, what is it. And let's use the files that work because we are work uh, in, the, in, in the file. Okay, we are using the directory path. So the file walk returns a um, string of a path. So in this case, let's create here stream. Let's call it by so let's create it like this. Having this, uh, now we can iterate okay through this uh, directory and let's check first if uh, the file is a regular file okay we don't want a directory um, or any other kind of uh, stuff and then we we are going to for example map it um, to file okay because I'm just going to explain later we are going, in this case, we are iterating, we are checking if what we got here is a regular file, okay? Then we map to the file. Let's suppose that here we, we uh, in the first, we just check and here we are going to take the particular file, the uh, our, in this case, that, uh, that CSV file, okay? And um, then we can just, I don't know, do like for each and for each file, let's call it by file. So for each file, what we are going to do, we are going to delete, okay, the file. Um, and that's it, okay, file that delete. So IntelliJ is telling us here that we can just use the, um, here the lambda expression now it's telling us that we can do it just here as method reference yes um, okay the return maybe it's boolean yeah the return doesn't matter so let's leave it like this so uh, the next thing that we have to, to do here as we can see we need to return a repeat status so if we check here in the repeat status 
what we have here is continuable, indicates that processing can continue or finished, which indicates that process is finished. In our case, we want it to finish, we don't want to continue. So in that order, let's re return here repeat to state, status that finished. Okay, so uh, maybe um, as always, I like to create this like its component. Let's say that it's a component, and just in order to log to see things happening, we are going to uh, let's say we are going to we are going to log here. Let's just log it. Executing the so we are logging here that we are just executing the file collector just in order to be more illustrative and uh, we can see okay what we we are doing actually so now let's go back to our uh, job configuration okay and let's inject here the tasklet that we have just created okay the file collector file collector file collector okay we are using the final here because we are using the lombok required as constructor in order to inject via a constructor argument so now that we have here our uh, file collector inject the next thing that we have to do is uh, we have to create a new step which kind of step is this tasklet step Okay, so in that order, they just create here step and let's call it by file collector tasklet. And for this one, we are going to use the step builder factory. Let's call, let's give here a name. Let's call by file collector, file collector. This is the name of our step and as you can see we have two kind of steps okay the chunk and the tasklet step okay and this receives a tasklet so as we can see here in our file collector it implements a tasklet so it's suitable here so let's call let's use here the file collector because it's a tasklet and let's just build it so as another step let's just create here let's just create this a bin spring bin and yeah so this is the new step that we have here this is a step as we can see here in our example we have already another step here okay so uh, now we need, um, okay, let me just, because it's complaining, but it doesn't matter. We, we are going there uh, later. Now, how can we configure our job to have multiple steps? It's very easy. Spring Batch is very easy. It boosts your, your productivity. So the next thing that we have to do is the next. So the next that we are going to use here, yes, is a file. The next thing that we are going to inject here, the next step that we are going to call is the file collector tasklet. So this is very easy way to do that. So having here our uh, file collector uh, tasklet, okay, which is the second step. The first step is this one file into database. The second one is the one that we are going to, to we, we just uh, inject here, uh, which is the collector tasklet. Uh, IntelliJ is complaining because we have now two steps. I think that we can just do this by giving here a new name and call it by this one. Uh, maybe the next thing that we can do here is, as we can see, uh, we are pointing to root folder, okay? Let me just open here my, my folders. This is 
the folder that I'm using, okay? So it's pointing here, and what I want to do is to point it here, okay? For this use case, let me just hard code here, okay? Later we are going to do a refactoring in order to be more dynamic. And let's just concatenate here, for example, So this is the way that we just concatenate um, the, the, the processed, okay? Because uh, let's go back here on my folder. As we can see, I need to go to this processed uh, folder, okay? Because this is the, the place that I want to delete the files. And going back here, I just use the file that separator because I don't know uh, it can be, uh, it will be the system agnostic, okay? Like, for example, you can have your separator like this, or uh, other can have, like, for example, like this. So, this is a very nice way. So, having it like that, and uh, let's run our application in order to see if it works. I'm just launching the application okay it's right the application uh, is up now let me close this okay let me just now get here a file okay and send it in order to be uh, processed yes let me just CSV rename extension Okay, now let me copy this file and paste here in this folder, the main folder where our job gonna get the file and start processing. Let's check. Okay. Okay. So it was very fast and we couldn't even uh, see what has happened. But as we can see here, the first uh, the job is executed with uh, like a, a finish. The first step was uh, from file into database and the next step was a uh, file collector. So now let's check in our directory in order to see if it deleted uh, the files there. Yes, it deleted all old files. Let me just, for example, put here some more okay and now let's uh, csv because we are just processing cs files with extension csv i'm going as you can see here we have a lot of files i'm going to put them here okay i put it here and now let's see whoa voila it just deleted uh, the files and we can see here we can check here okay yeah this it was the first time that we just launched our job okay deleted file and the second time it computed the first step and then the next step so this is very simple way okay that we can just test the approach called sequential flow which is uh, the implementation here in this case that we are implementing a multi-step job okay so guys i hope that you really enjoy this video give me some suggestion where i can improve and where where i can explain you better so see you in the next video